a warm welcome, please, for Srivanas Gopinath. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, thanks for that uh, introduction, that uh, good piece of introduction. It felt uh, very nice. And, uh, well, that philosophy bit in my introduction actually. <laughs> It came because I didn't know what to put. You know, when I when I signed up to uh, speak here, and you know, I was asked to give some personal tidbit, and that's the thing that came to my mind. But what we are going to talk about today is anything but philosophy. Uh, let me be very clear about it. Okay, so it's a deep dive session into data analytics, which is uh, the big data analytics system uh, we have developed for uh, government of Andhra Pradesh as part of ePragati. So, without further delays, um, let me uh, get straight into it. So, um, we have heard about uh, the data analytics, big data analytics, Hadoop, and uh, you know the need to have um, an enterprise-wide analytics system in corporate sectors. But trying to do that in um, in a government um, sector, and uh, you know that to trying to do a whole of state analytics system. Um, is a different ball game altogether. So you know, we had to uh, first build a strong business case, uh, and then um, conceptualize it. First of all, you know why why we need an entire statewide analytic system, and then next question would be how, and then what. So those are the three phases uh, which I'm going to describe broadly today. So this is the concept. So the concept is data-driven governance. So what is data-driven governance? It's an approach that values decision backed up with data that can be verified, usually with the help of, uh, with the help of statistical and business intelligence methodologies. Uh, this is become, becoming more and more prominent these days, particularly with uh, the, the uh, innovation in the field of uh, computing. So we have this distributed computing, massive par par massively, uh, massively parallel processing technologies and all that. So um, in the uh, older days, when uh, you know, we had these large processors and supercomputers which were very expensive, uh, people tried to avoid these kind of big initiatives. But uh, with the technology uh, we have today, uh, you know, it's, it's very viable and feasible to do this. So on top of that, we have the uh, availability of data, external data, that is, um, and the technology to process them. So some of the facts and figures are given here. You can see that uh, by 2012, White House had uh, already invested more than $200 million in big data analytics system. And then uh, <clears throat> you uh, have UK government, which was able to locate almost 7 billion pound additional revenue due to analytics, by leveraging analytics. So data-driven governance, in brief, is to leverage the uh, data and the uh, technology to process data to improve the uh, functioning of government and enhance the services provided to the citizens. So value proposition, so some of them are listed here. Uh, these are pretty uh, common uh, value propositions that you will find with any uh, data-driven governance initiative across the world. Uh, fraud and pilferage, uh, prevention of fraud and pilferage of funds, better engagement with citizens, um, effective usage of funds, and uh, managing public perception of government. This is very interesting because uh, you will see that uh, these days with the advent of uh, social media, uh, citizens have started engaging themselves in government. And it becomes imperative for governments to hear what citizens have to say and to work closely with them. Right? So uh, that's about the uh, public perception of government. So the government need not wait till the general elections to understand what people think about them. Right? So it's there, it's available live. So something happens today. Uh, some significant uh, uh, event in government today, uh, the government will come to know about public perception the next day within 24 hours. You know? So that's the strength of social media in governance. 
So <coughs> that's an important angle to consider. We'll come back to it later, but uh, these are the value propositions. Typically, uh, data-driven governance uh, had a traditional approach, right? Um, if you see, governments had already started doing some kind of analytics a uh, few years ago. And these were mostly at the uh, department level. So for example, the tax department or revenue department might have had a small analytics engine to find out uh, who is paying tax and who is not paying tax and you know those kind of things. Uh, <clears throat> but what we are going towards is a whole of government level initiative and uh, you know, uh, enterprise wide uh, analytic system. Again, this gels in nicely with the, the concept of enterprise architecture and uh, uh, JSR and uh, Dr. Saha already uh, you know, mentioned this many times that it's very important to think as a unit, as one government, or rather than thinking as uh, you know, separate departments. So who knows, you know, the department available in, uh, sorry, the data available in one department may be uh, very useful for some other department. So, you know, you may have the revenue department which would want data from, let us say, power uh, and, uh, you know, other departments to find out the energy consumption pattern and then, you know, see if, he's, if, if an entity is paying tax the way it should be paying or not, right? So, that exchange of data and, and you know, um, uh, getting the maximum value out of the data is most important from um, a government analytics perspective. So um, again, uh, leadership is also important. As you can see, the last point talks about enterprise strategy. You have a leader at the top you know, who will drive all these initiatives rather than having um, leaders in the um, department level or sub-department levels you know, trying to drive large initiatives. Moving on. So uh, as I said, um, Governments have already started with data, uh, with the concept of data-driven governance. In AP, uh, we have a core dashboard and you know some amount of uh, analytics and reporting available to the chief minister uh, at his finger trips. So, uh, and also of course, uh, AP is one of the first uh, states in India to recognize the importance of data and you know getting the value out of data uh, to run a government. But there are areas for improvement, and uh, you know, a couple of them are mentioned below, uh, the uh, predictive and prescriptive analytic capabilities. So that is where governments would want to look at. right? So if you are able to support your decision, or if you are able to um, uh, predict something and then decide, and then if somebody asks uh, you, why did you take those, uh, you know, a specific decision, you could easily you know, give some kind of uh, reasoning. You know, you could support your argument with some data, facts. Um, well, that will also, you know, avoid a lot of controversies, right? So it, it becomes much easier for uh, people to explain why they have done what they have done and uh, reduced controversies. So <clears throat> predictive and prescriptive analytics and then, of course, uh, data collection and governance strategies, two very important critical success factors for um, um, for any program involving data and IT. So these are the two areas of focus which we have identified, but there are many. I'm not going to uh, details of those um, aspects. So we have this um, animal called data analytics, which is big data analytics, and uh, it has a vision and then you know it has a definition and it is there because of a reason so the vision is there of course to support uh, the uh, sunrise ap 2022 vision and how by providing an integrated whole of government business intelligence and big data analytics platform and the definition is of course um, business intelligence and data analytics system conventional and unconventional, which is big data. Big data, of course, includes all kinds of data. It's wrong to categorize big data as only unstructured data, but big data is all data. So in the context of the uh, ePragati program, 
the data analytics fits into the uh, support layer. You can see there um, dotted uh, circle uh, along with uh, systems such as uh, CLGS, Certificateless Governance System, Payment Gateway, etc. Data analytics is an important supporting um, uh, application. Uh, the reason is that you really do not give any direct, uh, you do not really get any direct G2C services out of data analytics. So it's not that citizens directly use this analytics engine. I mean, some entities might use uh, the system, but ultimately it is meant to support the departments and the government to service G2C, to, to better provide G2C services. So it is therefore a supporting process. Well, it could also be seen as uh, um, an application or a system that can enhance productivity. But ultimately, fundamentally, it's, it's a support process, right? So that's why it's in that um, layer. Well, any program has to be supported uh, with strong business cases or use cases. So unless you come up with some business reasoning uh, and user scenarios, nobody would buy your idea. So this is one of the most important uh, uh, things that we did in the beginning when we started with this concept called data analytics. So I said, where is that we want to use analytics? You know, there were arguments uh, both for and against having an analytic system. You know, some people said that, why do you need analytics in government? Government can run, you know, without all this uh, big technology stuff. But yes, uh, government can definitely run uh, but there is some value out of uh, coming out of these systems that might be very, very useful for governments. So we went about building these use cases. We spoke to many departments, ex tried to explain them um, what an analytic system is, and then you know tried to solicit the information from them, data from them, and you not know, to build these scenarios. Broadly. Um, you can um, categorize these uh, use cases into two. One is supplementing existing business processes or department processes, and then creating new business processes or department processes. Now, this is one use case in primary sector uh, where we have a service identified already, pest control and prevention of diseases. Now, the question is, what value can data analytics bring here? Uh, so we were dependent on experts um, to go to do the field visits to see uh, what's happening in the field and then you know sat, get get some data from satellite and weather department and then um, put them all together and come up with some um, analysis and then you know say okay most likely this is what is going to happen this season uh, you might have a specific uh, type of uh, pest attack because the conditions are favorable and these are mostly expert opinions uh, based on their own experiences and etc but what can data analytics bring now so we have the uh, capability to analyze data from min multiple sources right so it could be uh, something happening in the neighboring state for example karnataka or uh, tamil nadu or telangana you know, something might have happened there which might be very useful for us uh, to know, right? And then you may have a lot of uh, articles on the web which talks about specific kind of disease or pest attack. Uh, and then for you to gather this information, these bits of pieces of information from various sources and then put them all together and understand, it's manually impossible. So now you have a system which can do that for you and can actually give you some kind of a prediction on what might happen, right? And then uh, it can be presented in a way that is easily understandable by people across departments at all levels. So you have the field level officers, you have the, uh, you know, the department HODs. So each one needs information, specific piece of information in a specific format. So you have that capability to deliver now. So that's the value addition here. So you have uh, using internal as well as external data and advanced analytics to predict disease and pest attacks well in advance and help farmers and departments take remedial actions, right? So this is one case. 
um, opportunities for uh, creating new services. Again, uh, this is uh, another scenario, uh, typical scenario, gaining insights into relationship between student enrollment, attendance, and dropout rates, and condition of schools, availability uh, of uh, basic facilities, uh, you know, toilets, and etc. And then you do an analysis. And then you find out, OK, that probably uh, most likely the, the, the high dropout rates or the low pass percentages are because of these reasons. People are not able to commute from their homes to uh, the school. Or you know, it's, it's too uh, hot. The weather might be very hot for people to just walk. They don't have commutation facilities. So then you bring the classroom to the people, right? So you have mobile classrooms as a concept. So you can think about delivering educational services through mobile classrooms. And there are a few more use cases. Uh, these are typical standard use cases. Uh, you have the commercial tax department trying to identify the anomalies in dealer behavior. Uh, the Department of Energy trying to do some load analysis. Our PR department doing sentiment analysis and all that. These are typical, and you can find them you know, in, in any literature. Uh, relating to g analytics and government. Of course, uh, some of these also come from our interaction with the department. So it's more customized to AP. OK, so now you have the concept of uh, data-driven governance. So people have bought it, bought the idea. So now how to go about doing it? How to about realizing this concept? And, on, and, and coming up with a system uh, that can be uh, used to drive uh, the governance, to, to drive the data-driven governance. Uh, to the, na the normal way of coming up with ideas is brainstorming. Uh, you sit in a conference room or in an in a, in a enclosed place, and then with a whiteboard and um, pen, you go and you scribble something on the board, and then you uh, pick. Uh, brains of people around you and also from outside, etc. Et so that's typical brainstorming strategy. But to give it some kind of a structure, we have something called a TOW, Stau's analysis, which is basically SWOT plus uh, strategic uh, alternatives. So you identify the uh, SWOT strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. You list them down as a project team. And then um, you come up with alternatives. For each of, each combination of um, you know the the strength weakness and um, opportunities and threats, so it's you'll see the x-axis here. The green boxes are strengths and weaknesses. The red boxes are opportunities opportunities and threats, and the blue boxes are the, where they intersect. So you have um, some uh, strategic alternatives in each of those blue boxes. Some key strategic alternatives I have picked. Uh, if you see the first one, it says develop strategy to use data from sensors, social media, and internet for analytics. Right, so it becomes very clear that you have you need to have a big data analytics system, and you have a, a, a use case here, right, a business use case. And similarly, uh, if you see point number uh, five, uh, uh, project leadership. So we all know now the, how important leadership is in, uh, in an enterprise architecture initiative. So how can that be leveraged to, uh, get, uh, to get the um, laws, rules, or processes changed? You know, sometimes these things become bottleneck for information exchange. So you know, they need to be fixed before you can you know, go ahead with the uh, initiative. And, and of course, there is a leadership skills to motivate and uh, you know, bring in more volunteers and technology experts. And all these things have happened. When I've seen it happening. We have seen it happening in our team. Uh, <clears throat> so now we have strategic alternatives. So we know the data-driven governance is important. And then we know what alternatives we have. Right Now we have to uh, crystallize them into a, a package and bring uh, you know, uh, a system, an application system out of it. So that is the process of building architecture. We have the enterprise architecture considerations, the principles, the uh, processes, the standards, etc. And then we have the need to produce value quickly and uh, incrementally. 
right? So that's also an important consideration like uh, Dr. Saha mentioned. It's important to think like an implementer rather than just like somebody you know, who's doing some consulting and lip service. And then of course the governance is a key aspect. It's one of the critical success factors. And uh, we have the governance body to see uh, that to see through the implementation of a data analytics system and ensure that it meets its uh, desired objectives. So now we have uh, come to the phase where we have to um, decide what are the analytical capabilities that we need, that the government needs, right? Um, broadly speaking, it's easier for us to imagine um, a scenario where you need all the capabilities that's available, but that's um, not viable and not even feasible. So we have to carefully plan and then prioritize and then select the top ones and uh, implement them. Although your architecture should be flexible enough to, um, to, to undergo gradual improvements over a period of time, but the way you implement uh, you know, should be uh, based on priority and uh, you know, the need of the R. And uh, there are uh, important thing, considerations around uh, creating an analytical system, the collection, data collection and enrichment strategy. Right? That's the point number four. You can see it's a very important aspect. And the way we do it, the way we plan the analytical capability. So we have the user cases which is, or stories which is given to us by the departments. And then we know what analytical requirements the departments need. We now go and uh, identify the data points or the data sets that we require in order to fulfill uh, the analytical requirement. And then we go in search of the data sources. So once we build this matrix, it becomes easier for us to come up with a data collection strategy. So that's why it's bolded there, you can see. And uh, <clears throat> capability development planning is also an important aspect that is, um, no, it's, it's fine to develop a system uh, and, and give it to the government, but the government should be able to manage the system and, and take it forward, right? So the government should have some capability on its own to uh, maintain and uh, upgrade the system. So all these aspects like training, the skill sets, hiring, etc., comes into the picture there. Data governance is an important aspect too. As I mentioned earlier, it's a critical success factor. Uh, and and uh, I have a, a slide then to discuss about the governance aspects of governance later on. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> so data governance. So um, define, approve, communicate data strategies, policies, standards, architecture, procedures, and metrics. Enforce policies, standards, and procedures, and make sure that all the applications, including data analytics system, adheres to those. And of course, uh, the um, um, oversight, that overseeing the delivery of data analytics projects, that's also an important uh, function of the government. Reducing bottleneck issues, identifying the uh, department processes, rules or laws that hinder data exchange, all these become part of the governance team. Last but not the least, you have the um, um, value promotion aspect, which is understanding and promoting the value of an analytical system across uh, the departments among all the stakeholders. And that's also a key uh, function of uh, the governance team. So finally, we have <coughs> the um, inputs for um, data analytics um, application. You can see it's the um, architecture considerations, analytical capability requirements, and strategic alternatives. So we have the blueprint. And uh, first step, of course, is to come up with a reference architecture or find a reference architecture if, um, if, uh, if available. And this is one of the biggest challenge we faced. You know, we found it 
we did a lot of research and we found that nowhere in the um, world um, any government had tried anything like this in terms of developing an analytic system. So you had a lot of use cases where department level initiatives were done and we had some architectures for those. But whole of government level data analytic, big data analytic system is something which not many people, in fact, at the government level, nobody had even tried. So this is one of the first I can safely say, and in, in fact, I have got the confirmation also from some of my colleagues uh, elsewhere, that this is one of the first of its kind being developed in the world. You know, if you find something like this, it's still under development or you know, it's, the scope is not as large, but this is one of the first. So we had to put in a lot of effort in coming up with a, a reference architecture. And um, finally we did, and this is what it looks like. You'll see that it contains all aspects of an analytic system. Uh, excuse me. So you have the uh, sources, which is structured and unstructured, the bottom. And then you have the delivery, which is uh, you know, multiple deliveries, alerts, portals, collaboration, mobile office apps, etc. And then on the right hand, on the left hand side, the dark blue boxes show you how uh, some of the uh, common aspects like metadata, security, lifecycle management have been uh, included in this model. We came up with a more detailed uh, architecture pattern, which is uh, this. This is very specific to government of Andhra Pradesh data analytics system. And uh, you will see, I mean, it's not legible, um, pardon me for that, but this is our uh, logical architecture. Um, again, it's the same thing. And, and uh, the key aspect here is the integration layer, which is the uh, central um, enterprise service bus kind of a product, e-highway, which will help us uh, in delivering and also uh, uh, extracting data from some of the sources. So I'm not going to go into the details of the architecture. Uh, just a few bullets on the key features. So we have predictive, prescriptive, descriptive, and causal analysis capability. Multiple delivery mechanism. KPI analysis, which is basically very, very important for departments because you know that's the way they are measured. And then you have all the uh, big data analytics system, a textual sentiment, pattern matching, topic detection, log stream, etc. Statistical and mathematical analysis. Reports, visualization. And one of the, um, you know, we have this concept of real-time streaming, log analysis, and sensor analytics, which can easily uh, gel with smart city initiatives. So tomorrow, if you have um, a lot of sensors coming, uh, sensor data coming from, let us say, smart city initiative, then you know this platform is uh, will be in a position to capture and analyze, analyze those data. Now the next important aspect is uh, the um, team building, right? Um, so uh, we have conceived uh, an idea, we have an idea of having forming a central uh, analytics team which will cater to the needs of all the departments and uh, we have some um, rough idea on how the team is going to look like. The composition include, I mean the team include might include data analysts, uh, engineers, data scientists, uh, statisticians, software engineers, DBAs and uh, OEM specialists. And uh, we wanted the system to be easily configurable and maintainable, unlike you, you know the corporate systems which are technology heavy because you have a lot of uh, uh, support system there and the, the core team, the technology team is huge and they can you know develop systems on their own. Whereas in government to minimize cost, it is better to have a configurable uh, system which can be easily maintained by the existing support team maybe with a little bit of training, but mostly it should be manageable by uh, the existing team members. So that actually brings in the COTS angle, right? So, and then the OEM specialists. <clears throat> and then of course, collaboration with uh, academicians. Um, it's important to work with various universities, particularly when you talk about statistics. So. We have advanced um, statistics institutes in, in, the, in, in the state which can contribute and also leverage the system for uh, R&D purposes. The challenges, of course, uh, it's always there. 
or before that, the critical success factors, availability of data. So these are some of the questions which we need to ask ourselves you know, as a team uh, to ensure that we are on the right track and we have the right support system. Do we have all the data points to perform accurate data analysis? What is the quality of data? Do we have enough historical data to perform analysis? And uh, coverage of data, data governance, training and talent development plan, uh, of course, and then um, team composition. Um, just one tidbit, I know uh, data might be available, but we may not, we may not have enough historical data. Uh, and then you use uh, whatever is available with you and then you get something wrong out of it. That's a dangerous situation to be in, right? You want to have analytical capability, but you want it to produce you know, um, accurate reports, accurate predictions. You don't want inaccuracies or you know, huge inaccuracies to creep in, which will you know, defeat the purpose of having an analytical system in the first place. So uh, one example, you know, there's some um, study which uh, was done uh, some time ago, which predicted that onion prices would peak in February 2016. And this was done few months ago, four, six, five or six months ago. And it predicted that onion prices in India uh, would be at its peak in this month. But uh, that has not happened so far, right? So imagine what would have happened if this information had gone to the government and the government procures or comes up with a strategy to procure onions in advance and then they find out that, wow, uh, you know, it's a waste of money, right? So you need to have good data and, and, and enough data to be able to do advanced analysis. So that's a very important factor. Key challenges, um, and of course, the strategies to overcome those challenges. <clears throat> Raw data, so the data availability. I think Pallab already mentioned about that. Um, and how do you overcome the um, challenge of availability? So you have to be proactive, start collecting the data. At least, if not now, you will have some data, one or uh, two years down the line, which can be useful, right? So you come up with, you conceive the idea now. You know, don't wait till your um, idea is materialized, but start collecting the data in some format. So that's one strategy. If you don't have enough historical data, well, if you don't have it, you don't have it. You can't do much about it. At least start building so that it will be useful uh, in the in the years to come. But if you don't do it, then you will not have data even after two years. So that's very important. Quality of data, and this is very important, um, specifically again from statistical uh, analysis point of view, you need to have quality unbiased data, and it's very difficult to control the uh, quality of data in the open world, right? So the systems and the um, sensors and et cetera, applications, they produce data, and there is legacy data. And you have to accept them as they are, right, because you can't go back in the time and then you know correct the uh, fix the issues so the first step would be to come up with some parameters which can measure the quality of data which you are interested in and then come up with some um, solutions to fix the, uh, and improve the quality of data so that's again a very elaborate and a thoughtful process and uh, data sharing again it might be uh, it might become a bottleneck particularly because now you have all the departments giving their pieces of data and it's going to be consolidated in one location and uh, departments might not want to do it and even we have seen that some of the um, uh, technical support teams uh, you know resist to change uh, to, to share data so that bottleneck has to be removed and again that comes from leadership as I mentioned earlier So uh, I have seven more minutes, but I think uh, I'm on track. So finally, what's that uh, we are looking at? Um, so we have the system. So now we have the concept, we have the idea, we have the system, we know the challenges, uh, and we are already you know, um, on the road. We have started our journey towards building the analytic system. So what's that we have learned and what's in it for others other governments and other states. 
right? So this analytics framework is unique, as I mentioned earlier, and you know, it, it can become a framework in itself for other governments and states to follow. It is something which is conceived, created here in Andhra Pradesh, but it can be useful for other governments uh, in other states and nations too. But of course, uh, we have our learnings and uh, we, uh, we, we present our learning as guidelines, right? So understand your data, assess your cap assess data as a capability. Now data as a capability is an important concept we are bringing in this concept here because data itself has a lot of value in it and if you have good amount of data, quality data, it itself becomes a capability which of course you can tap into. Um, governance framework is important. Uh, prioritization um, of uh, analytical capabilities is important. Don't go, uh, you know, go after all the fancy uh, analytics that that's available in the market. Just have it in mind. Build an architecture that is go that can support all those fancy stuff. But you prioritize based on you know, the cost and the time, etc. And what exactly you need, where you have your data capability, etc. Right. And then uh, the strategies for uh, acquisition, creation, profiling, cleansing, and enrichment of data. That's also an important thing. And uh, bottlenecks for data exchange. Identify and eliminate them. And uh, finally, and uh, I think it's one of the most important considerations, although uh, it generally gets left out at the enterprise architecture level, the implementation strategy, which is whether to go on cloud or on-premise or hybrid, etc. And again, you have to decide a, a, a good implement implementation strategy, um, one that will work for you. Don't go by you know what corporates do or other people do, uh, based on the data you have, you know the size, the volume, etc. You come up with a proper implementation strategy. So these are the uh, guidelines. And uh, that's it.